Hey guys, welcome back. We'll continue with the book Python for Data Analysis. In this video, we are going to cover how we can visualize our data using Matplotlib. This is part of a multi-part series, so if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Let's jump right in. Let's dive in and learn how we can use Matplotlib to visualize data. If you want to follow along, you can head over to westmckinney.com book. The link is also in the description down below. We're going to start out covering the basics of the Matplotlib API. Then we're going to create plots using Pandas and Seaborn. And finally, we're going to cover some additional Python visualization tools. Now, first off, we are going to use Matplotlib for visualization. And to do that, we are going to use Jupyter Notebooks. To do that, let's open up our terminal. And then we can enter the command Jupyter Notebook and press Enter. And this is going to start the Jupyter Notebook server. A new browser window is going to open, which displays our Jupyter Notebook entries. To get started, we can click on New, and then we can create a new notebook. So here we can select Python 3, and of course we can provide a name. So here we can rename this, for example, to Matplotlib. And to get started working with Matplotlib, we first need to import it. So in the first row, we can type import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and we can run that first statement. We are also going to import NumPy as before using the alias np. Next up, we can use NumPy's arrange method in order to create a range of values from 0 to 9, and we're going to store that back in data. We can then also print out the value for data, and if you have a look at that, we can see we created a new array object with the values from 0 all the way up to n including 9. Now, using that array of values, we can then go ahead and plot those values. For that, we can use the uh, plot method, which is part of matplotlib, and we're going to pass our data array object as an input to that function. So let's run this, and we can see we now created a new plot using matplotlib, which plots the values from 0 all the way up to 9. When we create figures or plots in matplotlib, those reside within the figure object. We can head over to Jupyter Notebook and create a new figure by calling figure on our matplotlib object. We can then add subplots to our figure specifying the relevant coordinates. In this case, we are adding our figure and then three different axes with different subplots. Now, if we run that, we get a new figure with three empty subplots that we created. And a quick note on working with matplotlib, when we create a new figure inside of matplotlib, after each block of code, that figure would be reset. So we need to make sure that we run that inside of a single cell inside of the Jupyter Notebook. Now, these plot axis objects we've been working with have various additional methods we can use. So for instance, we could go ahead and we can take axis 3, call the plot method on it, then specify what data we want to display, and we can also specify the color that's being used, as well as the line style. Now, once we run this cell again, we can see that it's updated. And in this case here, we have an additional graph that's displayed inside of that subplot. Now, in addition to using the default plot method, we can also display other kinds of charts. So for instance, we can create a histogram by using the hist method, or we can work with the scatter chart by using the scatter method. Let's run both of those. And then we can see here inside of the first subplot, we created a histogram, and here we got a scatter chart. To make the creation of subplots easier, we have a subplots method that is going to create a new figure and returns a NumPy array containing the different subplot objects. So if we call subplots and we assign it to fig and axis, we can see that we created six different subplots. And if we now take a closer look at the axis object, we can see this is indeed a NumPy array object that has been created. And when we work with subplots, we have a number of different options we can specify. So we can, for example, specify the number of rows in the subplot, the number of columns, and we can specify the x and y axis. Now, by default, matplotlib is going to leave some space around the different subplots that we are working with. So we can see here there's always some space between the width and the height of the different subplots. We can adjust that if we want to. And for that, we are first going to use the subplots method in order to create four different subplots, two by two. And then we are setting a share x and share y to true. And that ensures that all subplots are using the same x and y axis ticks. We're then looping over all of the different subplots and we're going to create a histogram inside of this axis. And then we're using subplots adjust in order to adjust the space. And here we are setting the width space as well as the height space to zero. So let's run this code. And now we can see we created four different subplots. 
and we can see that we removed the space in between those different subplots. We can also adjust the color and the line style for our charts. For that, let's have a look at an example. We are going to create a new figure as before, and then we are going to add a subplot. We are specifying our data object here, and then we are adding two different plots. We can use the color attribute to set the color of that graph, and then we can also adjust the line style and add a label if you wanted to. We have a second plot with a different color and the same line style. Then we can also set the draw style. So here we are displaying that as a step function. And then we can of course also add a label. And finally, we're going to use a legend function in order to display a legend. So let's display this. And now we can see we have our two graphs here. The first one is displayed in green, which is the color we specified. And the second one, the step function, is displayed in the black color that we also specified. We can also update the display ticks, labels, and add legends to our plots. And most of these kinds of plot decoration updates can be done through methods on matplotlib axis objects. So let's first have a look at how we can customize the different axes. And to get started with that, let's first have a look at the default axis labels that are being generated. So here we are creating a new subplot, and then we are generating a random walk displayed inside of our plot. So let's run that, and we can see here we generated this random walk, and we can see that these default X values have been generated because we are working with a thousand data points here. We therefore have a scale that goes up to 1000. But let's say we want to customize that to not use those default labels for the x-axis, but we want to use our own values. For that, we can simply add an additional statement here. We are going to define our ticks, and specifically, we are going to set the x ticks. And then inside of this list, we are specifying the different x values that should be displayed. So 0, 250, 500, 750, and 1000. And if you want to update the labels themselves, we can then, of course, also do that. For this, we are going to use the method set x tick labels, and we're specifying the specific labels that should be displayed at the different points here. So one, two, three, four, five. And then additionally, we are rotating those labels by 30 degrees and we're setting the font size to eight. So let's run this again. And if we now look at our output, we can see we have one, two, three, four, and five displayed as the labels. Again, they are rotated by 30 degrees and have a font size of eight. And they're displayed at the respective points specified up here. So at position zero, 250, and so on and so forth. In addition to those updates, we can also set some label text. So let's say, for example, we want to set a label for the x-axis and set it to stages. So we can run this. And if we now have a look, we can see that stages is displayed as a label for the x-axis. And finally, let's also set a title. For that, we are going to use the setTitle method. And we're going to specify what should be displayed at the name of the plot itself. And this, of course, will be displayed on top. In addition to updating the ticks that are being displayed, as well as the labels, we can also add legends to our plot. Let's have a look at an example. We're going to create new subplots, and then we're creating three different plots here, which are all random walks with a thousand values. We're setting the color to black, and then we're adding a label here. So for the first plot, we're calling it one. For the second and third, we are first of all updating the line style to dashed and or dotted, and then we are setting the label to two and three. And in order to display a legend, for those different labels that we added, we can simply say that we want to use the legend method here, which we are also calling on our axis. So let's run this. And here we can see we have our three random walks displayed, and we have an additional legend here with the three different labels being displayed. We can also add annotations to our plot. So for instance, we can add some texts, arrows, or other shapes, which are then displayed to better describe our subplot. And to do that, we can use the text method which takes the coordinates x and y, where we want to display our message, and then of course the message we want to display. We can also configure the font size and what kind of font family we want to use. Let's have a look at an example inside of our Jupyter Notebook. We're first importing the daytime module. We're creating new subplots, and then we're going to read in data from a CSV file, which is located in the same directory. And then we're creating a plot, black color, and we are creating a list of daytime objects that refer to certain events in the stock market. So for example, the peak of a bull market or the Lehman bankruptcy. And then we're using a for loop to loop over the list that we created, our crisis data. And we're going to use the annotate method to display our label and also to add text and arrows to our view. And then finally, we're going to zoom in on a certain event by using the set xlim and set ylim method. And we're also going to add a title. So let's run this. And if we now have a look at the output, we can see that we created this plot here and we added different arrows to different locations and also added our annotation, our text, which is displayed. Now, in addition to that, we can also add certain 
objects to our plot. So for instance, here we are going to use the rectangle method in order to create a rectangle. We're going to use a circle method to create a circle and also a polygon. And we're going to specify the parameters. So that includes the x and y coordinates. And then of course, attributes such as the color of the object and to what extent it should be transparent. And finally, we are going to use the add patch method in order to add those three objects to our plot. So let's have a look at the output. And here we can see we have our subplot with the three objects that we specified added at the specified coordinates. Now we can of course also save a plot as a file. For that, we are going to use the savefig method and we're going to specify the name. So here we're going to save it as an SVG and we can run this. And if we then switch over and have a look at our folder inside of our Jupyter notebooks, we can see we have our file saved here. And of course we can click on it to see some more information, but this is how we can basically save our files. So far we covered how we can use matplotlib in order to create subplots and customize them, but matplotlib can be a fairly low level tool. And as an alternative, we can use pandas and seaborn instead. So let's switch over to our Jupyter Notebook and let's have a look at an example. And we can start out by using pandas. Of course, we need to make sure that we imported pandas to do that. And we can create a new series object. We're going to use a standard normal method here. And we're using our A range method from 0 to 100 in steps of 10. And then we can also go ahead and call the plot method. And let's run this. And here we can see the graph that we created in pandas. So we're going from 0 to 100 and steps of 10. And the values displayed here are randomly generated using our standard normal method, which gives us back 10 randomly generated values. Now, instead of working with a series object, we can of course also use a data frame if you want to display multiple graphs. For that data frame, we again are using our standard normal method. And we're going to create four different columns. And again, we're using the A-range method to have a look at the values from 0 to 100 in steps of 10. We're also going to use grayscale in order to differentiate the different graphs that we are creating. And then finally, again, we're going to call the plot method. So let's run this and let's have a look. And here we can see our four different columns, A, B, C, and D using different grayscale. And again, we're going from 0 to 100 in steps of 10 with randomly generated values. Instead of using the line plots, as we did so far, we can also create bar plots. To do that, let's have a look at an example. We're starting out by creating two subplots. We are then going to create a series object. And then we are going to use data.plot.bar. In order to create a bar plot, we're going to set the color to black. And by default, the bars are going to be vertical. If you want to display them in a horizontal manner, we are then going to use bar h and then specifying the parameters. And if we now run our code, we can see that in the top plot here, we have vertical bars generated using the index a to p that we specified up here. And then for the second subplot, we can again see our index displayed here, but this time we're working with horizontal bars. And let's have a look at another example using data frames instead of series objects. So here we're going to specify a six by four data frame. We're going to specify the index from one to six. And then we're also providing a column index from A to D. And then of course we are going to use our bar method again. So let's run this. And here we can see we have our six different index values displayed. And for each of those, we have four different columns corresponding to A through D. So this is how we can display data frame objects. Now we can also create scatter or point plots. And for that, let's have a look at an example. We're going to read a CSV file, which we move to our directory. And then ultimately we are going to use a tail method. Now, if we run this, we can see we get back this table here, which displays our values. And to visualize that, we can then go ahead and import Seaborn. And then we are going to use Seaborn's regplot method. And we are also going to set a title. So in order to use Seaborn, let's first make sure that we have it installed. For that, we are first going to activate our conda environment. And then we're going to add the command conda install Seaborn. Now, once the installation is done, let's switch back to our Jupyter Notebook and let's execute our command. So here after importing Seaborn, we're then using the regplot method in order to create a scatter chart. And we are also going to set the title. So let's run this. And here we can see the scatter chart that we created. And using Seaborn, we can also create a pair plot, which displays histograms or density plots for each of the variables we're looking at. So to work with this, we are going to call pair plot, 
which is part of Z1, of course. And if we take a look at the result, we can see that we get an overview of our different variables that we're looking at, and we're getting a histogram as well as the different scatter plots. And in addition to matplotlib, pandas, and seaborn, there are of course many other Python visualization tools, such as Altair and Plotly, for example. But for creating static graphics for the web, for instance, using matplotlib, pandas, and seaborn is a very good choice. We learned how we can visualize our data using matplotlib and some additional tools. In the next video, we're going to focus on data aggregation and group operations using pandas. If you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to the channel and see you guys in the next video.